So today we are going to be breeding some Apistos. Now ever since we've moved into this room we've been trying to figure out what we're going to be breeding out the back. So obviously we've got the shop out the front and now we're in the back area of the fish room. So we've been playing around with a few things. You can see in some of the tanks we've got rainbow fish, we've got Apistos, We've got Corydoras, but in today's video, I wanted to focus on the Apistos because we do collect rainwater here and we use it for everything out back except for our quarantine. Things that love rainwater are a lot of our Amazonian fish and these Apistos have just been going absolutely insane. There's a few different types we have. Today, we're just gonna be focusing on our Cacatoides. They're what we've had the most success with. And you can see in this tank, we're gonna set up a pair to breed. So you can see we've got a male at the back. Now this is a big, beautiful male. So he's an orange flash, and he's already bred with, I think, three other females. And then I've also selected out a female for him. So this is a brand new female that he has never seen before. She's in this cup, it's gonna be very hard to see her. The females don't have as much color. Males are gonna have like heaps of streamers. They're gonna look really, really colorful and be a little bit bigger. Females are gonna be very petite, tiny, and it's quite obvious, I'll flash up like photos of what they look like so you can see the dimorphism of which one's a male and a female. But this is our female. We'll put it back for now before we set up this tank and I'll show you some of our babies. So I will walk you through the whole process of these fish, like in here breeding them. So it's gonna take like a couple of weeks to get this video done. But we'll show you the babies across the other side of the room. So up here, this is kind of where we've been breeding a few things. In this tank here, we have some Nisenais, which I got from Adrian. Up here, we've got the first female that that male bred with. This female is actually on Wrigglers right now. If you come close, you might be able to see that female. So there's our female, and in the tank, there's our uh, Wrigglers. So she's actually been keeping them up, like, in there, like in that crevice there, which is kind of funny because the way that Apistos normally breed is in a coconut hut. That's the way I like to do it, and I'll show you that in a minute. In here, the male just laid some eggs with this female. So you can see her swimming around. It's a very tannic tank, but up the back of that cave there's a bunch of eggs. So that was yesterday. Yeah, it must have been, because I write the dates down. What else do we have? Oh, and another female that he's bred with down here, which has more wrigglers that we can actually see up the back of this cave. I also do have babies. Unfortunately, I don't have the male of these babies because he jumped out of a tank, which is really, really annoying. But we do have a ton of double red Kakatoidi babies. So we'll put a light on here so you can actually see them. But yeah, down here, we have, or oh, close to about 150, I reckon, little tiny Epistogramma Kakatoides double reds. Wait, no, these are super reds. Eggs were laid two weeks ago, so these must be, yeah, two weeks old. I had the pair in for about 11 days and they spawned. The thing with breeding Apistos is it's quite easy. The way you wanna do it is introduce a pair, so a male and a female. They don't have to be bonded. You can just go to the shop and buy a male and a female. Just make sure they're healthy, make sure they're actually males and females. You set them up in a tank. All of the water we have in this system is very, very soft, so there's hardly any mineral in the water because it's all rainwater. And our pH is sitting at about 6.8. When we add all these botanicals into the tank, which are leaves and things like that, they actually drop that pH down to about a six. So this is a very, very acidic tank. These guys come from swamps and from like little puddles out in the Amazon. Like they'd come from really murky, turbid, soft water. And what you see here is quite resemblant of that environment. What we're gonna do is set up this tank for breeding this pair. I'll walk you through the whole process. Just bear with our temporary lighting for now. We're still trying to get money together to pay for the lighting. So I'll get rid of this net. So what we have is just a 60 litre tank, just a two footer. I've already added the introduction date. So the male's just come in this morning, he's settled in. And we also have in here our coconut cave. So the way these breed, you can see there's a bunch of black worms in here, which are gonna help with fattening up and conditioning our female. The way these guys breed is you have a coconut cave like this, or you can set up two pots or something similar to this, where a female is gonna go into a cave, then she's gonna try and get the male to come in, and they'll lay the eggs, and then she'll kick the male out, she'll take care of the eggs until they hatch, and she'll actually bring the eggs out and take care of the fry themselves. So 
They're really, really easy to breed when it comes down to it. You don't have to strip any eggs or hatch anything. You literally just set, make sure that the environment's good, and then you just watch nature do its thing. What I like to do is once they've laid their eggs, I just take the male out because he's just gonna distract her trying to breed again and she might eat her eggs. For the setup, it's really easy. Coconut cave or something similar like a terracotta pot. The next thing you're gonna need is some Indian almond leaves. So these you can get from most local fish stores. We sell heaps of these. These are what people use for bedders and stuff like that. They release a ton of tannin into the water and they're gonna soften the water. I like to add two. You can add three, four, five, it doesn't really matter. They really love tannin. And what you'll notice is the water is really clear right now. Over the next few days, these leaves will sink, release their tannins, and turn it into a really tea-colored water. And when that happens, it's also gonna drop our pH. It's gonna make that female think that it's time to spawn. So we'll go ahead and add our female now. She's not actually ready to spawn yet. But there she goes. But what's gonna happen is, you can see in here, we have all these black worms and she's gonna go around with the male and eat all of these black worms and this live food is gonna fatten her up and get her conditioned and full of eggs and ready to breed. I guess for now, that's basically what we have to do. I'm gonna make sure to close the lid so I don't get the male or female jumping out. What's gonna happen is that female is gonna get really, really fat, full of eggs once she finishes up all those black worms. Every day I'm gonna feed a little bit of live baby brine shrimp because that's gonna make her think that there's lots of food around for her babies when she hatches them out. So that'll also entice her to breed. And I think these tanks are about 24 degrees Celsius, which would be 78 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. I'm not Google, so don't quote me on that. I think that's, that's everything kind of covered. We've only got a sponge filter in there, so very low flow, just like swampy water and they will spawn. So we'll let them spawn, we'll come back, show you guys when they hatch out and when they have eggs and all that stuff and take you all the way through, so yeah. Okay, so it's been about three weeks since I last saw you guys and unfortunately I have to report that we haven't had a spawn from our pair of epistos just yet. I think every single pair of epistos in the room besides this one has spawned. I've had an Epistogramma cacatoides super red spawn, I've had a spawn of these episto oranges in a different tank and I've also had a fire gold episto spawn. So I've had every single episto in here besides these ones breed for me. These guys do look like they're gonna breed. I'm just not too sure when they're gonna do it. So this is the thing with the fish. Sometimes it takes two weeks, sometimes it takes a month, sometimes it literally takes two days. If you go around and look at some of the other epistos in the room, you can see I've set them up the exact same way, including our fire gold eyes, which aren't a cacatoides. I haven't had any spawns from our panduros yet. I'm still seeing how to breed those, but the eyes breed the exact same as these cacatoides. I might just show you the different stages of growth and what I do just today, so I don't have to grow these all out and wait for four months just to show you this video because you can learn the exact same things from this. I guess let's go and have a look at our Agassiz eyes as stage one, so the eggs, and then we'll go to our double reds, and then we'll finish up on a super orange with some fry. This is the pair that we were focusing on, and you can see that this female has made this cave her home. She's been cleaning it out, and this male, wherever he is, has been just hanging around the front waiting to hopefully spawn in here. So I do expect to get a spawn out of these guys very soon. I'm just not gonna wait for it. But this is stage one, so you'll get some flirting and the female will clean out the cave and hang around in the cave. And the male will hang around in the front. And when they're conditioned and ready to go, they will spawn. So this right here would be considered stage two. So all we have in this tank is our fire gold female and she's currently sitting on a clutch of eggs inside of this coconut cave in here. She's actually going around the tank and making sure that there's no you know, fish trying to eat the eggs and taking care of the territory around the cave. But she's been doing a pretty good job at making sure she hangs around in the actual cave and is taking care of her eggs. The second I see that there's eggs in the cave, the first thing I do is take the male out of the cave. So this male is actually in a separate tank, just acclimatizing to the next tank, getting ready for when she's ready to go and meet him back in the new tank like after she's done raising these eggs. I don't know if that makes sense, but the male's gone. All we have in here is the female now. And another thing I like to do is throw a few endlers up the top of the tank just to act as dither fish. So endlers have really small mouths, they're not aggressive, and it means when she gets her fry out of the cave, she's not gonna get confused and eat the babies. She's actually gonna be able to protect the babies from something, and the endlers do a great job at this. So I just throw a few male ones in there so they don't breed, and it works out okay. So you can see she's actually just down here She's trying to get me to piss off so that I don't eat her eggs. But this is stage one. 
About three days after the eggs are laid, they start to hatch and we can go to stage two. So up in this tank, we have a female at stage two of the breeding. So right now we have an Apisto super red female inside of this coconut hut with a ton of wrigglers up the back of the cave. All the Apistos kind of do the same thing in my opinion. She lays the eggs and takes care of them. They hatch and then she'll keep a big clutch of these wrigglers, which are just newly formed hatchlings that haven't really developed how to swim yet. She'll just put them in a big pile up the back of the cave and protect them inside of the cave until they're ready to become free swimming. So you can see she's coming out right now and making sure that I'm not a problem. And she's probably gonna make this Endla disappear <laughs> and make sure he doesn't get too close to the coconut hut. And that's why they're really, really valuable in the tank. Without dithers, normally my fish just eat their eggs. So it's really important that you do have this, but this is stage two and you can literally go next door and you'll be able to see stage three. So up here you can see a female with a huge massive clutch of babies swimming around her. So this is stage three. So what happens after the fish is done raising up those wrigglers and once they've absorbed all their yolk sac and developed into actual fish, they'll become free swimming. And what the female will do is take all of her little babies out of the cave and out into the free water, which is very risky for them. And she'll begin to teach them how to swim. So she'll spit them in and out of her mouth, keep them in a really tight group, and you can see here all of the fish will swim around her. What she'll do is take them around the tank to feed them and show them where food is and teach them how to swim and you know teach them how to be a little apistos. And she'll use those two front, I think they're pectoral fins, to you know direct, like she'll do these kind of movements and direct the fish around the tank where she wants them to go and show them food. The second they become free swimming, so out of the cave, this is when we start feeding them. So what I like to feed is for the first day, I'll feed a little bit of boiled egg yolk mixed up into a milk and throw that in the tank just to give them supplementary food. I don't use much of this. I'll also use live baby brown shrimp on the first day. A lot of these apistos aren't tiny, tiny, so they can eat live baby brown shrimp on the first day. And this is you know, one of my favorite foods because it makes them grow so quick. I'll do this once in the morning, once at night, and I'll do this for the first four months, basically until they're ready to be sold. So I'll leave the mum with the eggs for about two weeks, and then I'll take the mum out and leave the eggs in here. Well, I shouldn't say eggs, the babies in here, and let them all grow out. I've got a tank full of double red babies, which are about a month and a half old now. And at about four months, these guys start to become very mature adult fish. I don't know how it works with these fish, but you do get different ratios of sex depending on, I think, temperature. So cooler temperatures, I think you get more males, and hotter temperatures, I think you get more females. So that might be something you wanna monitor. I wanna make more males, and I hope that I'm right with this, because all these tanks are at about 23 to 24 degrees, which is quite cool. If I bumped it up to 28, I think I would get more females. Again, it might be the opposite, I'm not too sure. I'm not an apisto expert, like I just, you know, breed them for fun, and breed them in my room now to sell them but I'm sure I'll learn more about these fish as time goes on. But I literally have, at the moment, easily 400 apistos in production. So like, I've been a little bit successful at it and I hope this video was able to teach you guys how to do this. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this video like, taught you something about your apistos and I hope you guys go out and get a few pairs and try it out. It's a really fun fish to breed. It is a little bit more of an expensive one, but it's an easy one to do and in my opinion they're easier than rams like these guys are a real good step up from breeding guppies or something like that because they actually take care of their babies and they can be even easier than angelfish to breed so thank you so much for watching this video guys and i'll see you in the next one